Hey everyone, welcome back to Teacher Tech. Today uh, we're at the end of the school year, or pretty close to it here. Kids sure think it's the end of the school year anyway. Um, and uh, so everything's a little busy, and I thought I'd share a, a tool that uh, I like to use right at the end of the year here, and that's doing an item analysis using a spreadsheet. Now, we do a lot of uh, assessing and reporting of grades, but typically we're, we're looking sort of at the, the rows on our uh, spreadsheet program, right? We're looking at uh, students and how they're doing on different things, and we're looking at averages for students. And we don't very often look at uh, the assignments, the individual assignments or the individual learning targets um, in sort of an item analysis fashion. Uh, and in fact, the, the grade program is not especially well set up to do that. There is some functionality for, for that in PowerSchool, uh, but uh, you don't have, don't have some of the freedom to play around with it that you can do with just a, a general spreadsheet. Uh, so I'm looking at, uh, at this as maybe a final exam sort of thing that we're, uh, we're analyzing. And this one has 10 questions on it, and so I just numbered off my questions up top here. And uh, points possible for each question, I just made five, but uh, we can change those and, uh, and uh, have that affect the analysis that happens. Uh, and then I just put in student names and the scores that each kid got on each question. So on question one, this uh, Jim got four out of five. On question two, he got five out of five. And Elizabeth got three out of five on question two. So that's, uh, that's all just the data. And if you have this already in PowerSchool, you can do an export to what's called a CSV file, comma separated uh, values, comma separated values file. Uh, which can be opened in Microsoft Excel and uh, imported uh, into Google, Sh Google Sheets like this. Uh, <clears throat> so you, you probably already have some of this data, though you may not have your final exam broken down this way. Uh, I like to break down my final by learning targets or by learning goals of some sort here um, so that I can look at those individual items and figure out you know, where are the kids really struggling as a group. If I have individual kids who are, uh, you know, having trouble with with a single topic, but as a group they're doing okay, that's that's one thing. But if everybody is struggling with the same idea, you know, that tells me probably something needs to change in how I approach that in my uh, my next rendition of teaching this. So, the big power on a spreadsheet is not being able to keep track of of the information, but do these calculations of information and to do them very quickly. So if you're not familiar with uh, with spreadsheets, this is an excellent introduction into it because we have a few very simple functions, um, things that you probably know how to do uh, mathematically. You, you can do these by hand, and you see the uh, the power of these and how quickly uh, this can this can all be done. So first thing I like to do is look at an average. And so I'm just going to note here that everything in this row is going to be an average score for this. Now, when you're using a spreadsheet and you want that spreadsheet to do a calculation for you, you tell it that it's going to do a calculation by typing an equal sign. And then everything else here is going to be part of an equation that we're writing. Uh, there are some built-in functions with, uh, uh, with every spreadsheet program. Um, many of them are the same from Microsoft Excel to Google Sheets here, um, so you'll, you'll probably recognize some of these. Um, one that I use pretty frequently is the average function. So I'll just type in equals and then average, and usually the you type in all ta or in all caps here. Though I don't think these are actually case sensitive. It's just how how they're usually written. Uh, and then you'll do a left parenthesis. And after the left parenthesis, you need to select a range of values that you want to take the average of. And so I want to get the average score um, for all the students on question one. So everything in this column from here on down. And so I'm just going to click and drag on all those cells. And then to, uh, to tell it you're done selecting the range here, we'll just hit the right parenthesis. And that's it. Hit enter and it calculates an average for you on that problem, an average out of five points. Now let's say you didn't want the average out of five points, maybe you wanted a percentage instead, that's fine. We can just take our average score and, um, so I, I just went back here, uh, so I selected this cell, I went back into, they call this the formula bar here, um, and then I can divide that by five. 
and uh, that'll get me a decimal. And then if I change my uh, my format to a percentage, I can get that the average percentage on this one is a 63.33%. Now, on mine, it doesn't really matter that I'm using uh, 5 uh, as, as my uh, points possible on this one. Since they're all the same, it's not going to change from column to column. Uh, but I want to speed things up a little bit. I want to make all these calculations as quickly as I can. Uh, now, one, one thing that's built in here is the ability to fill in the same formula across multiple cells. So if I highlight this cell and then take my cursor to this little uh, box at the bottom corner until my cursor turns into a cross, and then I'm going to click and drag just over to the next cell, um, and so we can compare these. You see we get a new value there, and when I highlight that, I've got a new equation in for this one. And since this cell is one cell to the right of this one, it'll shift the equation as well. So you notice this one, the range we're using is B6 through B11. So B6 through B11 here. Well, when I shifted that over to the right, I get C6 through C11. So my, my equation compensates for this as well. Now one thing that, uh, uh, that you might want to do here is instead of using just a 5, say I have some of these worth 5 and some are worth 10, uh, let's see, I'll make this one worth 10 points instead, uh, my equation to get this as a percentage isn't going to be divided by 5 every time, it's going to be divided by the points possible every time. So instead of making this divided by 5, let's make this instead divided by whatever we find in this points possible cell. So that's B3 here. So that one doesn't change and when we see when we drag this over here we see that that one doesn't change either and in fact I'm going to drag this all the way across there. And uh, if you look at scores on in this column we've got mostly fours, a three and a five in there uh, and this one is out of ten points so 30%, 40%, 50% of the scores that we got, and we got an average of 40%. Now, if I change this one and say, oh, no, actually, that one is out of 5 after all, that average gets updated. So uh, all these values here are used in these, these calculations. Now, this gives me the opportunity to compare side-by-side uh, -side the overall scores for these numbers. If you like uh, a graphical representation of this, you can do that quick, too. So I'll just highlight these cells and then click this button up here that says insert chart. And then first thing you want to do here is go to the charts tab and decide what kind of a chart it is you want uh, you want to display. So I'm going to look at uh, say a column chart on this one. There we go. And uh, you can play around with the uh, um, the, the labels and the colors and um, uh, the key here, all that comes under the, uh, the Customize tab here. Now at this point, I'm going to go through and identify the ones that people really struggled with here. So I see that uh, our fourth one in, our question number four, we only had 40% of people get that one correct, or uh, the average score there was a 40%. Um, and I'll look at, uh, at all these across the board here and just pick out the ones that you know are, are really the, the low scorers. And that's where I can do an analysis as to um, you know, why that would have happened, why so many people scored so poorly on this one question or on this one learning goal. And you, know, you, might, you might say, well, this is just a really old one and it was a tough one and so people have forgotten it. We haven't really used this in a long time. Um, and you might make some conclusions about what to do in class as a result of that. Or, you know, maybe it's, it's a fairly recent one and you felt like uh, people had you know, learned it pretty well and then people bombed it on the test. So what, what do we learn from that? Uh, the point, though, is that it gives you the information to, to start thinking that way. Um, you know, how are people as a group doing on this type of question or on this type of problem? And then what can I learn from that about... Uh, what we're doing in class and what students are doing for practice and how we're going about learning this because it doesn't seem like the system right now uh, is, is working as well as I want it to. So the item analysis stuff, uh, in addition to averages, you can do things like medians and modes. 
mode is is uh, sometimes a useful one. So I'll just do equals mode, and then same thing here. I'm just gonna find the uh, range of values that I want there, and that's gonna give us the most common one. And oh, while my graph is freaking out here, I'm gonna get rid of that. And again, I can just click and drag this one all the way across. Um, I like looking at that one because I tend to uh, uh, to have rubrics that go with everything, and so this helps me to figure out you know where were most kids on my rubric if they were on the you know the fourth level. Uh, what's the difference between the fourth level and the fifth level? And that gives me some extra information about that. Um, and you know, it, it's maybe a little more useful than just looking at a straight average that can be um, affected by uh, really high scores or by really low scores. You get a couple of kids do really well and everyone else does poorly, and that brings the average up enough that maybe you wouldn't think that that was a problem area. Uh, so average or, or mean and mode, those are useful. Uh, some people like to use the median with this, so that has advantages to it as well. But uh, the, the point is that uh, you know these spreadsheets can make for really quick calculations to help you just get some additional data or, or more effectively use the data that you have to make some decisions about class. And that's, that's just good practice. Hey, thanks very much for watching, everybody. Uh, I sure hope that this helped you. If you found it useful, uh, I'd love to see how you used it in the comments below. And if you think uh, somebody else is going to find this useful, then you know, like it, share it. Uh, if you think future videos like this will help you out, then subscribe to the channel. Thanks again, everybody, and we'll see you next time.